This is the Linear Algebra Lectures video series. You can find more information about this video as well as a link to the written textbook in the description below. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about this video series and the associated teaching and learning tools I've created for it. Lecture 14, Applications to Networks. Our objectives for this lecture are to set up and solve a system of linear equations to analyze flow within a network, and to analyze your network solution to find possible values for any free variables. So what do we mean when we say network? Well, a network is a set of points called nodes that are connected by branches. You can see an example here. The total flow into the network equals the total flow out of the network, and the total flow into each node equals the total flow out of that node. So there's a bunch of different ways that we can interpret what this network might represent. We could interpret it as representing traffic flow, where the branches are one-way roads, nodes are intersections between those roads, and the total number of cars that are entering a neighborhood or city or etc., whatever the network is representing, must equal the total number leaving. And the total number of cars entering any given intersection must equal the total number of cars leaving that intersection. We could also think of a network as representing water flow. In this case, the branches are pipes, nodes are intersections of pipes, and the total amount of water entering the pipe system must equal the total flowing out, and the total amount of water flowing into any intersection of pipes must equal the total amount flowing out of that intersection. We could also think of a network as representing a circuit. In this case, branches are the wires, nodes are intersections of wires, and the total amount of current entering a circuit must equal the total amount leaving it. Or if it's a closed circuit with a battery, the total rise in voltage from the battery equals the total drop from resistors in the circuit. And the total amount of current entering any given node must equal the total amount leaving it. So let's look at an example. In this case, we've got a network that represents streets in a neighborhood, and we want to know what we can say about the variables in this network. Notice that some of the branches are labeled with numbers, so that tells us the amount of traffic along that road. And some of the branches are labeled with variables. We're trying to understand what we can say about those variables. So the notion that flow in equals flow out gives us equations that we can solve using our linear algebra tools. In node A, we have two branches flowing in labeled x1 and x4. So the flow in is x1 plus x4. And we've got two branches out labeled 50 and 75, so the flow out is 50 plus 75. Because flow in has to equal flow out, that gives us the equation x1 plus x4 equals 50 plus 75. Similarly, for node B, we've got one branch flowing in and two flowing out, so we get the equation 200 equals x1 plus x2. For branch C, we've got two flowing in and one flowing out, so we get this equation. For branch D, we get the equation x3 plus 50 equals x5. And remember that we also have the notion that the total flow into the entire network has to equal the flow out of the network. So in this case, we get one more equation, x4 plus 200 equals x5. Now, in order to apply our linear algebra tools, we need to rewrite each equation in standard form. So on the left, I have the equations that we got using flow in equals flow out. And on the right, I have those equations rewritten in standard form. Remember that there's multiple ways to rewrite a given equation in standard form. For example, in the third equation, I've subtracted x3 from both sides and subtracted 75 from both sides to get the equation x2 minus x3 equals negative 75. But I also could have subtracted x2 from both sides to get the equation negative x2 plus x3 equals 75. Those equations are equivalent, and so it doesn't really matter how you get all the variables on one side and the numbers on the other side, as long as you do that to get equations in standard form. Now we set up our corresponding augmented matrix. We row reduce that matrix, and then we write out our general solution. Remember that our first step is to rewrite each non-zero row as an equation, and then solve those equations for the basic variables. So this gives us our general solution that we see here. We have a free variable, which means we have infinitely many solutions. But remember that the branches represent one-way streets. That means that all of these variables must be non-negative. And that, as we're going to see, is going to put some restrictions on the possible values of our free variable. So for example, x1 equals negative x5 plus 325. And because x1 has to be greater than or equal to 0, if we solve that inequality for x5, we get x5 less than or equal to 325. Similarly, since x2 has to be greater than or equal to 0, we get x5 greater than or equal to 125. Since x3 is greater than or equal to 0, that gives us x5 greater than or equal to 50. And x4 greater than or equal to 0 gives us x5 greater than or equal to 200. So we solve those inequalities in similar ways. So how do we put all this together to understand what this tells us about x5? Well, we draw a number line and put arrows on the number line representing our inequalities. We have x5 has to be greater than or equal to 50, it has to be greater than or equal to 125, 
and it has to be greater than or equal to 200. So could x5 be between 50 and 125? No, because then it doesn't satisfy the other two inequalities. Could x5 be between 125 and 200? Again, the answer is no, because then it wouldn't be greater than or equal to 200. All four of these inequalities have to be true about our variable x5. So we need to use the most restrictive inequalities that we have here, which means that x5 has to be between 200 and 325 for all four inequalities to all be true. Let's work through another example. Here we have a network of water pipes, and our branches are labeled. We have three variables, a, b, and c, which are constants that were given. a is 150, b is 60, and c is 80. And then the other five branches are labeled with variables. And similar to the previous problem, we want to find the maximum and minimum possible values of x5. So we set up a system of equations using the principle that flow in equals flow out. Let's label our nodes a, b, c, and d here. For node A, our flow in is 150, and our flow out is x1 plus x2. For node B, the flow in is x1, and the flow out is 60 plus x3. For node C, the flow in is x3 plus 80, and the flow out is x5. For D, we have two in branches, x2 and 60, and two out branches, x4 and 80. And then remember that we have to have one more equation for the entire network, and our flow in is 150, and our flow out is x4 plus x5. This gives us our system of equations, and we rewrite those equations in standard form. Then we set up our augmented matrix, we row reduce that augmented matrix, and then we write our general solution. Now to interpret this general solution, we remember that each of these variables has to be greater than or equal to zero, which gives us an inequality involving our free variable x5. For the first equation, x1 greater than or equal to 0 means that x5 is greater than or equal to 20, and we'll plot that on a number line. For x2 greater than or equal to 0, that gives us x5 less than or equal to 170. x3 greater than or equal to 0 gives us x5 greater than or equal to 80. And x4 greater than or equal to 0 gives us x5 less than or equal to 150. And so on this number line, all four of these inequalities must be true, which means we need to use the most restrictive inequalities, and that means that x5 has to be between 80 and 150. So when you're working through these kinds of problems, there are a few things to keep in mind. You're going to have one variable for each unknown branch. These should be labeled in the diagram that you're given. You're also going to have one equation for each node, plus one more equation for the entire network. This system may not be homogeneous, so it's possible for there to not be any solutions. In certain contexts, it may make sense to look for solutions where all of the flow values are non-negative. That means doing the analysis where all the variables are greater than or equal to zero, like we did in the examples earlier. However, in other contexts, you might have two-way pipes or two-way streets, in which case negative flow might be allowed. So just pay attention to the context and apply those inequalities when they're necessary. Thanks for watching this video lecture. You can find links to the other videos in this series and to the written textbook in the description below. If you're an instructor, you can contact me for more information about the over 300 online linear algebra homework problems that I've created for the free MyOpenMath platform.